Did you know that there are free AI tools out there that are definitely better suited for your literature review than ChatGPT? If you didn't, then this is the video for you because we're gonna talk about Google's Notebook LM and how amazing and powerful it is for any literature review that you're doing. In this video, we will cover how you can just upload one seed document to Notebook LM and get lots and lots of different references from that seed document for your literature review. We're gonna look at how you can upload multiple literatures at once, create overview tables, extract information from it, literally create the core, the base, the foundation of your literature review. We're gonna look at all the features Notebook LM has for you to understand your literature, the mind mapping features, the summary feature, the flashcard feature. Even with the new update, there is even a feature that you can create videos to understand the paper that you're reading, which I haven't tried yet. We're gonna try that together. And finally, I'm gonna give you a little tips on how you can use ChatGPT to make your Notebook LM experience even much better. So before we start, just a quick introduction. If you don't know me yet, hi, I'm Ainur. I'm a third year PhD student in chemical engineering at Imperial College London. And I made it my mission to teach you every secret I know in academia, video by video through all my social media channels. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. I'm gonna grab my laptop and I'm gonna show you my screen so that we can have a look at it together. All right, so what you can see here is like a, a little setup that I built. It's actually a study that I did by myself for my PhD. And you can see how I uploaded a couple of papers here already into my Notebook LM database. Now, what you can do is you can always click on discover and then you can always describe what you're looking at. For example, I could say uh, bubble size distributions. Oops distributions in liquid plunging jets, which is, by the way, what I'm very much interested in in my PhD. So then we're gonna click on submit. And then what it's gonna do, it goes into full discovery mode and tries to find more sources from the internet, which we can use um, for this article. So here you can see that it just selected 10 sources and you can either just import them directly or you can look it up, check whether it's useful or not. Uh, for example, this one, I know this paper, it's a really good paper um, and it just found it, which is great. It's like the, the first paper that it got. So for example, let's say this and let's click on import. And then you can see here on the left side how it's importing that. Apart from this, if you click on add, and this is like with the new update of Notebook LM, you can do this. You can not only upload PDF files, but you can upload everything in Google Drive, Google Docs and Google Slides. Links, like you can literally upload a link of a YouTube video and reference it and ask questions about it and learn about it, which is awesome. It's amazing. And then also like to any kind of website or just normal text. So you have like lots of lots of options to put all kinds of things into your notebook LM. So once you did that, uh, obviously like if you are in academia, most of the stuff is gonna be articles and PDFs that you have. So then what you can do is, and this, uh, I just love to do that. I love to create overview tables for my literature review from this. So I'm just gonna do things like create a table with, columns for minimum bubble size, bubble breakup, mechanism, methods, limitations, key findings for each piece of literature, okay? Then I'm gonna select all sources <clears throat> and then we're just gonna click go and wait for a notebook LM to do its magic. And if you haven't used it before, you're gonna be so surprised, so astonished by how good it is in what it does. It was good even a year ago when I first tried it. And since then it's just gotten better and better, honestly, like at this stage, it's just amazing. So it takes a while, which is okay. So while this is loading, you can see on the right side that uh, the studio part, and here, this is actually very interesting. You can create things that we, find normal, for example, reports. So you can do like an FAQ, a timeline, study guide, briefing docs. We're gonna try that in a minute, a couple of them, but that's just basically for you more in the studying part of this. So if you don't wanna create a literature review, but you say you wanna understand an article better, then these things are very useful for you as a guide and to just understand how things are related to one another. This mind map feature, we're gonna have a look at it also later. It's 
a great overview. Like it honestly does such a great job um, in just uh, connecting all these papers to one another and sorting them into categories. Then audio overview, last time I tried this, it was decent, it wasn't bad, but what it does is it creates a podcast basically where you can then listen to the contents of the paper. It wasn't bad, it was quite okay like for the beginning, but obviously it was a bit too general. And then video overview, I haven't tried this. Like I'm very intrigued to try this out. Like we're gonna try that out together. But first let's have a look at this. So the table is done. As I said, it created minimum bubble size, bubble breakup mechanism, mechanism, methods and limitations. And I wanted it to do this for uh, every literature. So the cool thing about Notebook LM is that you have all these dots here, you know, one, six, five, and it will directly cite from the paper. So this, what you can see here, is directly from the paper itself. So it basically tells me this is where I got this information from, which is just, oh, it's amazing. It does not hallucinate, you know, and you can always look up where it's got its information from. And yeah, and you have this like for every single literature and like being able to extract this kind of information from, and this is like just 10 pieces of literature, right? I did this for like 40 pieces of literature. That is so much work and you just get it done so fast. Like it literally, like this would be weeks of works for your literature review and you just get it done in a day or so. You still have to double check the stuff, understand it, yes, but like honestly, it still saves so much time. It's unbelievably great in what it does. Yeah, that's the table part. That's the part that I use the most. Dump my literature in there, extract anything that I want from it, and then keep using that for whatever I need it for. So now that we got the bread and butter of what Notebook LM does, let's look at the more fancy stuff. So I want to try out the timeline thing and see, um, I think what it's going to do is it's, it's going to, it's probably going to put them into or order the literature maybe via, I don't even know what that is about. Let's have a look what it does. And while it's loading, yeah, I also want to show you this. If you click like on a single literature piece, like let's say on this one, it will then open up a source guide, which is also new. Like I haven't seen this in the previous version of Notebook LM. Maybe it was there and I didn't see it, but it creates a summary and then key topics, which is amazing. So you directly get an overview of, um, what key topics this paper is touching on and these are even clickable. So you can click on it and then it will extract that, the information on this exact key topic and put it into this chat. Okay, so now uh, our timeline is done. Let's open it up. Here, look at it. Oh, this is so cool. Like you literally have now a research timeline where it broke down in which parts this research on plunging liquid jets happened. So what happened in the 1950s, what happened in the 1960s, and depending on what you do re your research about, this is actually very useful to just have a look at how did things develop in your field, right? And you can see this goes up to the 2010s, and then even the cast of characters that it just summarizes like what, who contributed to what. Awesome, love it. And then let's uh, close this. So. Yeah, I think study guide, briefing document and FAQ goes for itself. Uh, I wanna show you the mind map feature because that is also so cool, I think. We obviously all know what mind maps are. They're a great overview for complex topics, right? And the cool thing about Notebook LM is that you can link so many papers to one another, so many articles, and having a mind map that just connects all these different things and puts them together into a perspective, that is so valuable. I think a lot of people don't understand how much time it takes to process articles one by one. And I know a lot of you are like, oh, but then you're gonna end up so dumb and you're not gonna get anything. But guys, this, is, this goes beyond that. So for example, take me for example, okay? I've been working on my PhD thesis for now two and a half years. I know the physics of what's going on. I've read so many literature pieces on this already, but sometimes I just need to create an overview or I need to extract certain information from articles. And it is a very tedious work to reread that article just for that one piece of information or to connect these articles with one another. This does not necessarily add much more knowledge on that field, like for me, it just creates extra work. So this is kind of like a secretary, like an assistant, and like someone who gets the tedious work done for you and gives you then this mind map. So let's have a look. We have this mind map. It says gas entrainment by applying your liquid jets. We have introduction, mechanism, basic hydrodynamic features. So it's basically based on these 11 sources created the main uh, part of this uh, mind map. So let's go to minimum entrainment velocity, right? So we opened minimum entrainment velocity and then it has like, again, 
five subchapters: general remarks, regions of onset, prediction, empirical correlations. Let's say empirical correlations, super interesting. Let's open it up. Again, we have three now empirical correlations. This is so cool. So basically, it scanned 11 papers and it found me three different empirical correlations that I can now choose from for this topic of minimum entrainment velocity. And then I can basically click on one of it. And then again, the notebook chat pops open and it will extract me the formula and yeah, where the equation is. It says here equation 20 and everything I need to know about that equation. So if I were to just hover over it, you can see how the equation then pops up. I just have to like open the paper and then it's better formatted. Love it, 10 out of 10, would recommend. So if we close this now and go back to the studio. Okay, so I'd say like in terms of stuff that's not experimental, things that work really well, that's what works really well. Now we're gonna move over to the more abstract stuff like this audio overview and video overview and we're gonna test how well that is, okay? So let's click on generate audio overview and that's going to take a while so we have to be a little bit patient here until that's done all right let's have a look at the results like i'm going to be honest i had a look at the results with you guys at the same time but then my camera died and this part of the footage is gone so i'm just going to watch it again and try to behave like as if i've seen it for the first time but i didn't i didn't so um let's first have a look at the audio guide so this actually Today we're diving into something you is an audio guide you basically click on all the papers here and then it creates an audio summary which is basically a podcast by two people and this is totally ai generated so we'll just have a quick peek so that uh, into the, the the audio so that you have a feeling of how that sounds that, that probably podcast. encounter every single day but maybe uh rarely see for what it truly is picture water pouring from a tap you know, or a majestic waterfall hitting a pool. Mm -hmm. It seems straightforward, doesn't it? Just liquid meeting liquid. Right. But beneath that seemingly simple surface, there's an astonishingly complex world of fluid dynamics unfolding. Yeah, exactly. And that complex world is what we call plunging liquid jets. Yeah. It's a field absolutely... Let's move in a little bit further where they dive into the um, more meaty stuff of the paper, I guess. Let's skip the introduction. Let's go to here and uh, see what they talk about there. I have a feeling it's maybe not even created the podcast from the start. It's I think it's just creating it as it goes because it says one minute eight out of 21 and I just... Bubbles attract each other, oh, no. come very close, maybe deform a bit, but then repel without actually making contact. Okay. Next, kiss and go. This is where bubbles briefly touch, sometimes for an extended period, but then separate without merging. Air exchange during these short contact times is thought to be unlikely based on observations. So a near miss, essentially. Sort of, yeah. Then, of course, coalescence itself. This is where two or more parent bubbles merge to form a single... That's all correct. From what I've looked into, these podcasts, they're really great if you're new to the research topic. They are perfect. If you have no clue, like, you know, when you read an article and you don't understand anything, you know, you just read it and you're like, what is this? What are these hieroglyphs? This happened to me when I started with machine learning. I read like a machine learning paper and I was like, what? What are you talking about? I don't get anything. So in that case, these podcasts are awesome because they use a lot of met metaphors and like examples to really break down a complex topic and make it easy. In my opinion, once you advance a little bit more and you learn more about that research topic, it gets too easy so then you're like okay I'm missing the details now of the paper but like if initially it's awesome and also that's something that I uh, tried um, in that the larger in the bubble. in the version that got lost in the recording you can also jump in here and record your own audio and ask questions so for example let's play this you can click on join uh, let's give it a couple seconds yeah, these video and audio things always take a little longer than the text results, obviously. But um, let's be patient. Okay, guys, I tried it. For some reason, the interactive audio mode is just not working right now. But like, as I said, when I tried it before, it did work. So it does work. So basically what you do is you interrupt the podcast and then you just ask a question. You're like, hey, can you like explain a bit more how bubble breakup happens physically? And then they just, oh, then they say, oh, that's an interesting question. Let's dive more deeper into that. And then they start explaining. So it's 
quite interesting. So now that one, I'm kind of sad that you didn't see my first reaction for the video one, but uh, yeah, let's just watch it together. So basically it now created like an overview video of the topic, explaining the entire topic in a video. And it's just, I, I think it's awesome. All right, welcome to the explainer. You know that thing we see every single day? A stream of water from the faucet hitting the sink and boom, a flurry of bubbles. But have you ever like really thought about what's going on in that tiny split second of impact? Okay, let's get right into it. We're about to uncover this. And then it goes slide by slide through the entire topic and explains it like a lecture. Secret life's... Look, let me just show you a couple if a slides. Temperatures of actually rupture is a other. It's a process called coach. Just remember the... Inc and that is super cool. I think it's a very, very cool feature and it's great for teaching as well. Like if you wanna teach students for science communication like I do, or just if you need, because I feel like the great part about Notebook LM, it, it serves everyone. If you're someone who learned through listening, you have the podcast. If you're someone who learned through flashcards, you can create flashcards, mind maps, summaries, or video if you learned through watching, you know? So you basically have like this tool that teaches you different Different topics and you can pick whatever kind of learner you are whatever however you like to like study new material that's your thing and you just pick it and you go for it and it works reliably very good and um, so far I've never caught it hallucinating it probably will every AI does mistakes at some point but it's really trustworthy so yeah that being said I hope you like this video give notebook LM a go you're not gonna regret it it's awesome and it's free and uh, if you like this video please engage with it. This is a very small channel and every like, every comment, every subscription means a lot for the channel to grow and for me to produce better videos for you guys because it does take a lot of work alongside of my PhD and uh, yeah, it motivates me to see that you like the video. So apart from that, I hope you're doing well wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.